Joining us now is former White House senior policy advisor Oliver McGee and Robin Biro, Democratic strategist. Oliver, what do you make of the rising tensions between Trump and the intelligence community and even some Republicans on Capitol Hill, if you will? Well, the, um, the Senate is really um, like a, a, a place for looking to the House uh, like a saucer is to hot tea. Uh, essentially, this is a hot topic of issues uh, associated with trying to cross all the T's uh, with uh, taxes and, and transportation and so forth, and then really dotting the I's on internationalism. Um, uh, Trump is involved in essentially what we might call the uh, Nixon-China games. Essentially, what he is trying to do is align himself with Russia and essentially try to separate Russia and China because that's essentially what we need to do to look at global competitiveness. Mm -hmm. This is the big three that we're looking at economically, uh, uh, United States, Russia, and China. And so we're really trying to see if we can uh, separate the two so that, that we can be more competitive in the nation, uh, particularly looking at capital right. and technology and innovation, and then be able to reach right. in, the, in the, the rule of three Rob, in the competitiveness. Robin, so I, but he uses, he uses intelligence in that sense. Right. Robin, but what has gone on with the leaks about the intelligence on this hacking of the DNC, particularly after the election? It is purely political and that seems to be Donald Trump's biggest beef is that the, this information is being leaked out of the CIA it shows up on NBC News before he's even been briefed on it and that is concerning I, I want to remind you too that the hacks were not only directed at the DNC they were also directed at the RNC but the only the, the, the DNC's emails were the only ones who were leaked to WikiLeaks so that in itself is purely political so I mean, you've, you've got to see both points you've got to see that like they were definitely trying to influence the election uh, specifically by just releasing the DNC's emails so uh, you know I would I would argue that point Kevin, but the, the issue is, and, and Trump, the, the heart of what Trump is really getting at is that the, and it's hard to do on Twitter, granted, and it's, it, and he's in a difficult position if he's disparaging the entire intelligence community, but it's that the leadership of these intelligence agencies it is politicized and and even though Sean Spicer denied the report in the Wall Street Journal that they're looking at right-sizing the, the office of the director of national intelligence which by the way has only been around since 9-11 mm -hmm. and it's it totals more than 1700 employees at this point nothing wrong with trying to tighten up these intelligence agencies. Yeah, and what's a shame is that we haven't gotten any really clarity or direction on what actually happened and what they're talking about, whether they're, they haven't come out and said, you know what, no, no uh, voting machines were hacked, right? So it's coming out and, and it's saying, it, it's really ambiguous. And so that's the problem I think Donald Trump has w had with this current situation where it's been heavily politicized and there's been no clarity on what actually happened. They actually ha have not said, yes, it, we're talking about the DNC b being hacked or we're talking about John Podesta. There hasn't been clarity on what specific incidents. And let's go back and, and look. Uh, President Clinton actually didn't want to get daily briefs on the intelligence community. And then you also look at, at this current election cycle. Donald Trump had a lot of things leaked out about him as well that, that weren't good, especially including some of his tax, tax returns. I agree completely to add to what Kevin's saying, and I think Robin pointed it out. This was both to the Democrats and the Republicans' emails were hacked. So now you're getting these headlines coming out that say, uh, you know, the election was rigged. And it, it's really not, there's no proof of that. To, there's nothing out there that says that this impact impacted the election in any way. It was to both the right, Democrats and, and the Republicans. And to point that out, James Clapper said that yesterday. These are right. not voting, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, but these were not voting machines that were hacked. These were not vote totals that were tampered with. This, this was the first time they said that, though. This is information that has come out. Right, finally. Right. It, it, exactly. Oliver, one concern is, though, that as you have these confirmation hearings that start next week, particularly with the Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, you have Trump at odds with some of these Republicans in the Senate, potentially. Do you expect really, really difficult confirmation hearings for some of these nominees? Well, uh, the, the job of the Congress is to create a, a little bit of tension. Uh, this is what Thomas Jefferson said, a little bit of tension is really good for government. Uh, in a sense, 
the Congress usually gets to the point to where they confirm the president's choices. The president has made very fine choices for his cabinet, and this process will unfold very, very nicely. But there should be questioning that Congress's job is to basically advise, counsel, and warn as it makes its confirmation process and raise issues that are necessary for the American people to observe. But more importantly, the president will get their choices because the president has three powers, the power to appoint, the power to sign, and most importantly, the power to persuade. And this president is using his power of persuasion to reach the people directly using technology. He's very, very good at Twitter. He's very, very good at basically making sure that the media, who is basically chasing rabbits, he makes sure that uh, he gives you a rabbit every day. That and then basically, if you don't, the media will create his own rabbit. And so he's really, really <laughs> using that technology very well. And Robin, I'm going to give you the final word, but I know you will agree with that. We get something, we get more than one thing a day in terms of <laughs> the things to discuss from Donald Trump's Twitter feed. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, that, that had me reeling there. That he's very good at Twitter. Well, I don't know about that. I think it's worked much to his detriment. And as you said at the beginning of this segment, you can't always sum up in 140 characters or less some of these vital, vital uh, points that Donald Trump is trying to make. But Robin, and we have a, seen him, as you said yourself, disparage the intelligence yeah, community. But here's a, here's uh, a but news alert, Robin. We've got, we've got to go, but here's a news alert. I said those very things during the election about what he said on Twitter. And guess what? He won. Robin, thank you. Sure Robin Byro, Oliver McGee, <laughs> thank you both.